thought I'd show you guys how I print my graphics onto aluminum panels. Uh, you're going to need some acetone, and a rolling pin specifically purchased for this, uh, and an old t-shirt to help you distribute pressure. I am going to use this rubber coated roller from a laminating machine instead. Uh, clothes iron. I did this in less than two minutes without cutting anything and uh, it's been that way for over a year now so could clean the aluminum or rough up the aluminum with scotch bright. I find that it is too fine. Some 200 grit sandpaper or a sanding sponge. A toner printer. Uh, toner is the instead of little cartridges it's Sometimes this costs more than the printer itself. You can scoop up one of these at a thrift store or a yard sale for next to nothing. This one I got for, I want to say $15. The Google it on your phone while you're at the thrift store or yard sale and make sure there are drivers for Windows 10. So I'm making panels for Barton PCBs. There are already panels in existence for that that I can copy the layout and sometimes even some of the graphics for. Uh, this is paint.net. It's free. Uh, the Barton drill templates that he so graciously provides. Um, his website are already the correct proportions. So I just kind of loaded them in paint.net and made graphics and text on top of it. If you are doing your own design from scratch, uh, 118 pixels per centimeter works pretty good. Uh, save it in PNG format. Then when you go to print it, you do not use paint.net or Windows. What you want to use is another piece of free software called Erfran, Ifran, because Erfan view. Transfer paper. You can get for free by sending an email to Sweetwater. So sign up for that and they will graciously mail you a lifetime supply of transfer paper almost every month. Monkey. Masking tape, scotch tape, uh, blue painter's tape, all of these things work. One piece at the top. Uh, because the pinch rollers in your printer will crinkle it and distort it if you use more than one piece. Uh, I find it completely unnecessary and also sometimes makes it worse if you try to cut this even close to the size of your panel that you want to print. It is a waste of paper and time to try to print multiple panels on a sheet. Okay, let's load it up. <laughs> Print, make sure it is the correct proportions. Oh, look, 134 millimeters, aka 13.4 centimeters width. That means it's correct. Original size from image DPI. By the way, that horrible sound is apparently what the USB does when it's plugged in. Aesthetic I went with inexplicably this evening was a uh, obscure uh, Middle Eastern gods and uh, like 90s Xerox alternative rock flyer font or VHS overlay text. This is my paper cutter. I'm using it to trim these down. Oh John, this looks terrible. Your light looks terrible. How are you gonna know the exact edge to trim it precisely? Well, bam! I got that idea from Make Magazine. I'm sorry my fingernails look horrifying. Uh, I use a lot of oil and machined parts at my job, so that that's like, after an hour of scrubbing, it'll still be there. Holy crap, I screwed up. I gotta stop what I'm doing. I gotta do it again. I forgot to reverse the text in the image before I printed it. Sets three whole pages of this expensive transfer paper just wasted.
So I think the damn painter's tank was the most expensive part of that. One. Okay, I wrinkled that one. Either vertical or horizontal. Horizontal. Boom, and we're ready to go. Plug in my iron, set to like. I don't have a digital thermometer. I'd, I'd record temperatures and figure out which one worked best, but I don't have that at my disposal. So while that's heating up, what we're gonna do is sand our panels, rough them up, not too rough, to give them a good surface for the uh, graphics to grip to, the toner for the transfer. And then we are gonna wipe it down with a rag and some acetone. I'm not sure how to get a shot of that without breaking out a full tripod. So I have broken out the whole tripod. Exciting, huh? If you hear any horrible mouth sounds, that's because of Buddy Hackett. I know these cost five bucks, but they last a long time, even though they're made by 3M who poisoned our water supply. You just have a 150. 200 grit piece of sandpaper and it'll work too. Uh, you might be better off to have some kind of soft surface underneath it. And that works great too. He's grumpy because he hasn't gotten his wet food yet. Do not skip this step. Acetone costs like a dollar for a bottle that'll last you months. It's essential for good adhesion. Rub it on the face until it comes back. If it seems like you're having difficulty getting a uniform shininess, that means you've sanded it good because the dirt is getting down in the cracks, which we don't want the dust there, we want the graphics there. Be careful with your acetone, uh, it's like acid for anything remotely plastic and it will destroy everything. Sure. Yeah, the corner. The hardest part, I will screw this up uh, the first time you do it. Um, so be prepared for that. Uh, this does take some practice. Uh, you will not get it right the first time, so just go ahead and tell yourself that and keep getting ready to do it correctly. Uh, if you make a mistake, just wait for it to cool, grab a rag, wipe it back off with some more acetone. Hey, I forgot to hit record, so I'm going to do it again. But this was the first attempt at the 4046 shaper panel I was making. Some red price tags on here. That means is I either use too much pressure or too much temperature. So I adjusted that and did this one. And see, I've got a line right down there. That's a crinkle in the paper. Uh, that comes from me. Uh, well, just the paper being crinkly. Uh, practice will get rid of that but other than that that looks pretty good I mean we got a little clear border there so I could have done some overrun with the uh, graphic you know smeared the edges and put it under the outside to make it uh, full bleed but I'm not too worried about it that still looks pretty alright man you could touch that up with a fine point sharpie um, See, that would make that look a little better. And if you want it to be more scratch resistant, you can hit it with a clear coat of polyurethane and spray. And then you uh, slide it back on top of this iron for a little while. Uh, just gently let it bake on there for about five minutes. You probably want to do that with some decent ventilation too. That's not decent ventilation. Sure, you know, face, face. You can see I've got these white dots here to help me get my alignment. I don't know if that'll focus or not. Yeah, get those as centered as you can. Look at the edgy graphic. Try to get that as centered as you can. Okay, looks like I've got a little bleed, which is great. Holding it rather tightly, I'm going to flex a bit. Times. 
that'll give us enough sticky to hold it still. Set it on the iron. Gently put the edges down just to avoid wrinkles, which I got on my first go around. Middle out, apply the pressure that I have predetermined that works best through practice. Shazam! Look at that. So pretty great. Oh, well, not perfect, but pretty great. Remember, perfection isn't real. It's a concept, not a state. You can get real close, but you can never get it perfect. We have our panel. Sandpapered. Oh, there we go. Reversed. And printed on Sweetwater catalog paper. And get my holes lined up. I've got some dots up there in the corner, and I've got a little white dot which not completely visible, but y'all should be able to make out some of them. So I'm gonna hold it like this and flex gently. Just rub it on the tip once, that twice, a little bit of practice. If you don't have a rubber roller, which you can get out of a laminator, a uh, small piece of towel and a rolling pin will work just fine. gently, almost falling off, not quite, Oops. careful with your pencil or your nail or whatever you decide to hold it still with, but you look at that. Beautiful. I don't know if uh, the dropping stuff and frantically searching for tweezers helps with your... Uh, image cut coming out clean but uh, it might. How do you get the nuts on there without scratching up your graphics? And the answer is you don't. Ushers help. So I've taken an 11 millimeter socket that's long enough 
and I put electrical tape on the end. Stick that on there. Gently tighten it. And you'll do less damage than if you just went at it with a pair of pliers. We're gonna go to the knob box to find some antiquated knobs that command as much respect and mysticism as our pixelated Xerox fonts and Elder Gods command. So I need four four of a kind knobs here. That's that's not gonna happen. So let's just go with our cheapo knobs we got off of uh, AliExpress last year. All right, let's do perfect fit. Oh, <laughs> it's backwards.